because I have the professor here. Here. This time. Let me see. Professor? Okay, so I, I, I'm going to hang up and I'll call you right back with another phone, okay? Okay. Uh, the bottom of Tesla and the bottom of 16. 16b. We mentioned two interpretations, um, two sources for um, marital relations by day, why it's forbidden. One was Rabbi Yochanan and one was Rish Lakish. Uh, Rish, Rabbi Yochanan brought a pasuk that conception only takes place by night. Rish Lakish says, uh, his his uh, interpretation is he brings a pasuk that someone that shames his way shall uh, shall uh, have death. So it's more of a modesty issue as opposed to a, what's the right time for conception. Maybe just for the telephone, is Tezayin Amid Beis? Tezayin. Tezayin Amid Beis on the bottom. It's about five lines from the bottom. Okay. So we, we discussed what is uh, the Pasuk of Reish Lakish, what does Rabbi Yechina, what does Rish Lakish do with Rabbi Yechina's Pasuk? What does uh, Rabbi Yechina do with Rish Lakish's Pasuk? Um, yesterday we learned what Rish Lakish does with Rabbi Yechina's Pasuk. Now, today we learn Rabbi Yechina and Haikra the Rish Lakish, my daughter's bay. What does Rabbi Yechina do with Rish Lakish's Pasuk? Um, what is he learning from that? He already knows that uh, relations uh, by day should not, be, uh, should not be performed. It should because of uh, his reason is conception. So, he's using it for something that it says in the book of Ben Sira. So, there's different versions of, of what's got, there's different interpretations of uh, uh, stories about who Ben Sira was and all of that. But one thing's for sure that he wasn't part of the, uh, the, the canon. It wasn't in, it wasn't, mm. his book wasn't put in the, into the Tanakh. And some say that Yermia Navi is Ben is Sira, and this is Ben Sira, is a child. If you look at the Gematria of Sira, <coughs> which is two seventy one, is Yermio. It's two seventy one, and um, uh, it's the the Chelkas Machaikik brings this. I don't know the source for it, but he brings in Ebenezer. He brings um, about. Uh, story that Yemio was in a bathhouse and there were people not good there and they were trying to force him to do something with them. In the end, um, uh, a woman entered the bath after them and got pregnant from Yermio's uh, wow. Zera and that's been, and had a child, Ben Sira, Misaber Bambati, got pregnant from a bath. She went and, into uh, the Yeah, she went in afterwards, she got pregnant from that. And that's Ben Sira. Ben Sira wrote a book that's, that looks like a, um, a Sefer Mishlei. <clears throat> in English, I think it's called Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes is Kohelis, right? Kohelis. This is Ecclesiasticus. Oh. This is, I think, Ben Sira. Oh. And um, the Gemara Sanhedrin says that who is someone that doesn't have a, the world to come is someone that reads Ben Sira. And here we have the Gemara quoting Ben Sira like as if there's no problem. Um, it must be uh, that it, <laughs> it must be a confusing thing. Okay, so anyway, it's written in Sefer Ben Sira. The more modern historical part is that we only had the Greek until uh, Solomon Schechter uh, in the Geniza. Wow. He got he found the Hebrew. Of, that was one of his big discoveries. Was he found the Hebrew of Ben Sira in the in the Cairo Geniza? Now I think they found the full version. I think in the um, Dead Sea Scrolls. Anyway, so it says, There's three things that I hate, and there's four that I don't love. What are, they, what are these things? We're going to have all four, I think. Sar, Sar means a minister, but here it's referring to a Talmud Chacham. Hanir that frequents the bar, the, the bars, the taverns. That's, not, that's something that he hates. But drinking in shul. 
Amila, and oh, thank you. And there's some that say Sar Hanargan. Ra, uh, the um, Nargan would mean he causes talk. Ramila Sar Nargan means a Sar, a, a, a Talmud Chacham, that gets angry. And the Masha explains over here that whatever the version is, the person can be judged. Bekisei, Bekaisei, Bekaisei. Kisei is the way he spends money. Kaisei is how he gets angry. And Bekaisei is when he drinks. Kisei, Bekaisei, Bekaisei. So they said that there was a, um, a guy that was taking a girl on a date. And um, he grabs the steering wheel. And she grabs the steering wheel and gives it a yank. They're just swerving off the road. It's like, what are you doing? Says, I wanted to see what you do when you get angry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try that. <laughs> So, um, you have a better story with Mincha. Oh, yeah. What's that one? <laughs> the one that they, uh, there was a uh, girl, she wanted to know if he's a Yerushimayim. So the Mashpia said, take, take him out Mincha. Time. No, there was, she wrote to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, ask your Mashpia. And the Mashpia was uh, Mrs. Gottberg. And she asked Mrs. Gottberg, how do I find out if he's Yerushimayim enough? So, um, she said, uh, make a date around Mincha time, like uh, about a half hour, an hour before Mincha. And when it comes to Mincha, see if he excuses himself to go to Davin Mincha. So it comes He'll Mincha see. time, he doesn't move. So she says, oh, it's Mincha time. Uh, you know, so he says, well, Osek the Torah, Osek the Mitzvah, put him in a Mitzvah. So I'm, you know, I'm busy with the Mitzvah. I don't have to do the other Mitzvah. So she thinks, oh, he's a smart guy, but this is not the guy for him. Very good. Hamashiv Sheves Bimrube Karas, or Karta, Karta. Someone that has his seats, he seats his students in a very high place of the city. Karta is a city. And what's the issue over here? It could be the issue is that he's uh, a Balgaiva showing everyone that they're learning. I don't know. Maybe it means that uh, Rashi also says that it's not a good place to learn because everyone's going to interrupt you. Ba'iches Ba'amo Mashtin Mayim. Someone that urinates when he holds his uh, bris, that's not uh, appropriate. We learned before, I think, Rebbe Lazar, so Eliezer. And someone that enters his friend's house without knocking on the door. Yeah, he holds his bris while he's in. Pop in, like a pop in. Pop in when you just walk in. Oh, pop in. Pop in. Pop Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan asks, "Vafilu lebeis, vafilu lebeis, even to your own house, you're not supposed to come in without knocking." Why? This could be someone's doing something uh, private, getting dressed or whatever, and uh, you're not supposed to surprise them, embarrass them. Amar Rabbi Shimon Ben Yechai, Shimon Ben Yechai says, "Abar Dvar Makadosh Baruch Hu Sainan, Vani Eni Ayavan." Sounds very similar. There's four things that Hashem hates, but for me, I don't love them. Someone that enters his house suddenly. Definitely not your friend's house. Someone that holds his, his uh, that holds his bris when he um, urinates. Someone that urinates naked in front of his bed. Now, um, so an interesting Tysus here that says that some have a girsa for this version that it's really Mishamish Mitasei Aram, and that's supposed to be a problem um, because he's not modest, which is very surprising because that goes against everything that we learn. But Mishamish Mitasei Bifnei Kolchai and someone that has uh, Tashmish uh, relations in front of any living being. Amalei Rav Yehuda Lishmuel. Any living being? Sounds like what does it mean, living being? Kol chai. So R- Rav Yehuda says to Shmuel, Rav Yehuda is a, is a student of Shmuel after Rav passed away. He says, Even in front of mice, I mean, you have to be concerned about everything that's uh, living in the house. A Malay, so Shmuel responds, Shinina, sharp one. Remember, we had this a few days ago. Yeah, a buck teeth. Buck tooth. Uh, <laughs> Lai, that's not so. It's talking about a certain house, a sa- I'm referring to a certain household that, or Rabbi Shem Ben Yechai was referring to a certain household, where they have Tash Meshemit in front of their servants. Is Shinnah like a, like a, 
being mean or just like crazy? It's a nickname. It's a nickname. It's yeah. Show like how sharp he was. Shorty, isn't it? Show him how sharp he was. So is he saying? Oh, okay. Like uh, after that. <laughs> okay, the my darish. What about them? What were they thinking? It's interesting that he doesn't give the name of who they are. Uh, Shmuel is not giving Rabbi Yehuda the name. He says space plainy. Maybe he did give the name. I think it recorded. But the um, my darish. What do they hold? That they have relations in front of the servants. They hold shvul chempayim machamar. The, it says that it says that uh, wait here. Avram said, "Wait here with the donkey." And he says, "Imachamar is am hadayim el achamar." The nation that's similar to the donkey, referring to, they're not Jewish. So who cares? They're not. That's that was their thought, and that's uh, Shmuel is saying that's not correct. Rabba bar Ravuna, Rabba the son of Ravuna. Ravuna is a student of Rav, and this is his son Rabba. He, I'm sorry. He's saying sit there because they're not Jewish. Abram did exactly the opposite. He said, you don't go any further. Right. You wait here. No, but it's unless it's just that they're a chama. That's that they're animals. Yeah, it, it's, that's, what, that's what it's referring It's saying that they don't count. That they don't count. He said uh, uh, they caught a, uh, um, someone, a chassidish guy with um, fake um, plumbers and the, for the chickens, fake plumbers that had an OU on it. So when they caught him, they said, uh, they said it's just an OU anyway. He <laughs> 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 says, uh, you know, I'm a daimel chamar. They don't count. But, um, okay. <laughs> Rabba. That's the problem with that mentality. Right. It's reverse the stop in double stop. Right. Rabba Baravuna Makarshkirsh Zagi the Kilta. Rabba Baravuna would put on some sort of bell on the bed. It wouldn't make noise when it would shake. And so therefore, um, everyone would know that he's, uh, he's having Tashmish and everyone should go away. Because they had like a one-room house or something. Now, Tysus is bothered by this. He says this is not modest at all. And um, he says a different shot. He says that what it's referring to is that we're going to see soon that the, the certain Amiram would chase away flies. And you know that Australian hat that has the uh, those things, those corks that hang mm-hmm. down? Mm-hmm. These, uh, I don't know what it's called, but they have this. They wear it on the beach that keeps away the flies because the thing keeps banging. So um, it was something that would keep away the flies because it, would, it would, uh, wasn't a bell. Yeah, that's to, what Tessa says. To, yeah. Abaya, Bali, Didvi. Abaya would, chase away, Abaya would chase away flies. Rava, or pa- possibly Rav Papa, Bali Pruchi. Other flies, okay. uh, other type of insects, mosquitoes, whatever. Gnats. There's five things that if a person does them, he's uh, guilty of, uh, he forfeits his life, and he has, he has the guilt for it as well. Someone that eats peeled garlic, peeled onion, or peeled eggs, he leaves them overnight, with the, uh, as it's explained. And he eats them. You're not supposed to leave these things overnight. It is in brachas? No, no, I'm just... Uh, it doesn't say it. Uh-huh. Doesn't it come up in the brachas? It could be. There's a... Um, there's a... Megula, Imai Megula. Now, um... Actually, this is a place in this yeah, room this where the, art scroll is not a big advantage because it, it brings down the Makain Avraham that says this doesn't apply. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, can I flip in here for a moment? Magain Avraham writes that the various things mentioned were dangerous only in Talmudic times. Uh-huh. Which is an interesting wow. suck. Because the, the our people are, are yeah, still careful with this. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw someone writing yeah. about it, scallions, mm-hmm. considered mm-hmm. onions, mm-hmm. Because onion, you know, like they have all of these mm-hmm. other things that have to be uh, discussed. Mm-hmm. Someone drinks liquid that was mixed. Excuse mixed me. drink. But then the Maharal mm-hmm. says it's still spiritually problematic. Um, uh-huh. So that's why we it's a really we interesting we footnote. That's what we would like. Excuse me. So. that's liquid that's Thank left you. over overnight, open. 
Vahalon bebeis akvar, someone that sleeps in the cemetery. Vahanaitel tziparnov, someone that cuts his nails, vizarkan l'shusarabim, and throws him into the street. Vahamakiz dam, v'mishamish mitas, someone that does bloodletting and has um, tashmish on the same day. Okay, now we go back to explain this. Ha'ichol shum kalaf chulu. Someone that eats peeled garlic. It says, even if it's put in a basket and it's sealed and it's there's a simon on it, nevertheless, we still uh, have to be cautious. Ruach there's a bad spirit that's on it. That's only if you don't if you didn't leave the either the top or the bottom. I'm not sure what Ikran would mean. The top or the bottom. Uh, where, it's, where the root is, so the lower part. Or the or the peel. But if there is a little bit left, then it's not a problem. A little bit of the peel is left on. That's what we that's what they do. They don't cut off the whole thing if they're gonna leave it. If someone drinks liquid that's left overnight. Rav Yehuda says the name of Shmuel. Second time we're having this combination today. Rav Yehuda and Shmuel. No sharp one, though. The root. The root. Does the refrigerator have an effect on anything? That, if you put it in the refrigerator. Thank you. Right. That would be Afal Gav de Manchi Basilta Metzayr Oh, you said Mashki Megulin. Megulin. It would be, it'd definitely be considered covered. It would definitely be considered covered. You're saying by liquid? By liquid. No, by the, by, by, by the vegetables, it said it doesn't matter. By the vegetables, it said it doesn't matter. No, Rabbi Smith was just saying by liquid once it's in the refrigerator, it helps. That that should help because that's covered. Right. Um, the other one we said it doesn't matter. That was the ruach ra. Here it says v'ushalana b'klima teches. Rabbi Yudas said the name of Shmuel. That's only if it was overnight in a metal utensil. Amar of Papa, who clean netter can clean matechas. Clean netter. I looked it up in the Jastro. It's al- it's made from alum crystals. It doesn't help me much. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, doctor, check that out for us. Google it. Oh no, I can't say that's gonna. Yeah, did it show up? Did it? Did it change the screen? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's like metal. That's also like metal. Klima What is it? How does it translate? Clean that there and then. Natron. Natron. Okay. Oh, that sounds better. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't, still doesn't know. <laughs> this thing about the, um, the liquids that are left over in like, metal vessels. So I, heard, oh, I heard a story that yeah, the gold um, Rob Marlowe yeah. Sr., was with somebody and they were out on the same. They were traveling. It was very hot, and he kept on offering Rabbi Marlow something to drink, and all he had was cans of soda. And Rabbi Marlow wouldn't drink from it. Oh, that's serious. And then later on, it came uh-huh. that it came out why he wouldn't drink, even though he was thirsty and it was hot. He didn't want to drink from a metal can. Wow. Wow. Uh, uh, that's interesting because here we're seeing Mashkin Mizugin. Did I say that it's open? I said I, didn't, I said that it's open. Here it doesn't say that it's open. Maybe that's maybe it's correct. Here it just says that it's mixed. Shavarlam Alila doesn't say open, even if it's sealed. I I thought this was referring to open. That was the whole issue. But it doesn't say it clear. It doesn't say it open. And Klinatar is um is is uh, is just like klima techas. Maybe it's the aluminum that was made in a metal pot. Really is metal pot. Maybe it's not a mashkin. Maybe soup is a oichel. Maybe. That's what some. Uh, oh, now let me comment back on your on the mashke on the, the drinking and the and the show that some people they said um, uh, you know you're allowed to make kiddush on chamar medina. But some people said that that uh, whiskey and schnapps is not a uh, it's not really a, a mashke. Mm. They said it's a food. It's like soup. So you can't make kiddush on soup. Even uh, a cup of soup is not a it's not a chamar medina. This is like a it's a food. It's not a that's what they said. And you can't make kiddush on. It. 
I don't know. There's a thing like uh, Glenn Nesser. Uh, natron mm -hmm. is a type of sodium bicarbonate. Sodium carbonate occurs naturally in colorless uh, deposits in desert plains, and in ancient times it was often produced from seaweed as well. Oh, wow. The more elsewhere in the Zara indicates that people would craft vessels from excavated mixtures of earth and natron. These vessels, these vessels could not normally be used to hold liquids, but in a dry climate, it's conceivable that they could have done so for a limited time. Interesting. Okay. Someone that sleeps in the cemetery. Why is he sleeping in the cemetery? He wants to get an unholy spirit. And what's he going to do with it? He's going to make use of it, probably. The only thing is that Zimnan the Masaknale, that sometimes it backfires and it's a. Uh, and uh, it causes your, danger. Ruins your whole day. Causes danger. Amongst everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, a pregnant woman shouldn't go into a cemetery. Uh -huh. Yeah, the shaman's yeah, sure. there. Somebody tries to grab her. They did it. Someone that cuts his nails and throws them into the public place, into a public <coughs> area. Because a pregnant woman can step on a nail and have a miscarriage. Why exactly? I'm not sure. But... Uh, yeah, this is a famous Gemara. That's only if it was, the, was cut with the scissors. That's only if he took off his hand nails and his toenails. Fingernails and toenails. This is only if he didn't cut anything after he cut the nails. If you, once you cut something afterwards, then it takes away the problem of that. Then there's no problem. Now, however, the Gemara then says, But all of that is not true. They're all a problem. It's all a problem. Oops, that, uh, How do you call it? Jumps? Uh, oh, if it moves. Moves. If, it gets, if the nail gets moved, then it's okay. That, that must be from other places. There are three things that are said regarding nails. Sarfan is a chassid. Someone that burns them is a chassid. Kaivran is a rasha. Someone that buries them. I'm sorry, Kaivran is a tzaddik. Kaivran is a tzaddik. And Zarkan is a rasha. Someone that buries them is a tzaddik. And someone that just throws them around is wicked. Rashi says that a chassid is better than a tzaddik. Where's Abi? <laughs> um, why? Because you don't have to be concerned that it's going to get uncovered. Because it's going to get burnt. It's burnt. It's, it's gone. Tysus brings down, Tysus mentions that when someone burns a part of his body, it's damaging to himself. And so he's ready to damage himself. To make sure someone, Mr. Snapper's right, to make sure that someone else doesn't get hurt. So, okay. Someone that does bloodletting, and then on the same day, he has relations. So, Dhammer Mar, Master taught, This skin will have weak, weak sons, weak children. If both of them, both husband and wife, um, did bloodletting, Vishimshu, and then they had relations. Have them bana bali rasan. That's even worse. Bali rasan means they're extraordinarily weak. Rashi says that they have some sort of creature in their brain, some sort of insect in their brain, like fetus. I don't know what that would uh, correspond to. To the top. It says it's uh, the likely explanation is it refers to Hansen's disease, where's the doctor? Which is also known as leprosy. Uh -huh. Which is distinct from Saras. Okay. So isn't there more to this? That after bloodletting, he doesn't do. There's more to yeah, this. Yeah, that's Igmar Shabbos, I think, about the bloodletting. What there's more to, to do. The, 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 he does play, and he doesn't eat or something like that. Right. There's more. So interesting. Amarav, Rav says, that's only if he doesn't eat anything, you see. But if he has something to eat after bloodletting, then it's okay. Amarav, person can't have relations by day. It's an interesting pasuk to quote for this. So my mashma, what does that tell me? Rav Chizda, what's he saying? Amar Abaya, Abaya says, Shem Yerba Dover Maguna Vesiskana Alav. It's by day, there's going to be light. He might see something on her that he doesn't like. 
and um, maybe she's not clean enough or something. Or, uh, and uh, he's going to be uh, uh, grossed out. Amar Ravuna. Ravuna says, Yishol Kedoshim Eim Veim Hashem Shemitaseim Bayoim. Jewish people are holy. And they don't have Tashmish by day. Amar Rava. Vemayu Beisafel Mutter. If the house was dark, that's allowed. Beisafel must mean that there's no light coming in. The Talmud Chacham Afel Betalisi Meshamish. The Talmud Chacham, that's more modest. He can use a um, uh, a garment to make it dark, and and have tashmish. Tanan, we have a problem because when our Mishnah we said aitishamish laraner, we said that you have to do examinations, and the examinations were meant to be you meant to be new cloths each time, unless you're going to check the cloth to see if it was clean. So the way of explaining that it says aitishamish laraner. If you have a light there, then you uh, you could see it by the light and reuse the cloth. But if it's dark, you can have. You can have the stack of the layer, right? Uh huh. That's right. That's right, and that happens. Ema, you have to have some on him. Ema tibadik laraner. It doesn't mean to shamash laraner. It means to check to the to the to the light of the candle. Tashma. It's taught in the brayso. It means that it's not the tashmish itself that was laraner when the mishnah said. To shamish laraner means tibadik laraner. That in between they would have a candle lit. Somehow they would light a candle, or maybe in another room they had a candle. They would go yeah, check. But, but it would light outside. No, no, no. no I was talking about at night. No, but the whole point of that pasuk is to prove that it has to be night. Now you said it could be day as long as it was in a dark room, or you, you had to have the sheet time. So the question is, so so now you're saying what? So we're saying that it needs to be dark. We had a kasha. The Mishnah says that no, you can uh, use a candle. To no, check no, the clock. We said it could be light, but you could, you could, you could find a dark room where you could. Oh, a Talmud Chacham. Yeah, it must be that we're okay. not referring to that. It must be we're not referring to that. We're talking about. So it's we're not, that, that's like an exception. The implies that since you have to check by light, by it means light, the that the is dark. Right. right? So how? What, no, so the, the, the the candle doesn't mean that it's like the candle was the whole chiddush. How could you have light. a candle there? I mean, you can't have any light. It has to be pitch pitch black. Okay, that was a separate thing. Fine. So the answer is, is that there is no light. It's just that you're, uh, by the Tashmish, there's only light by the examination. So either you lit up a candle or you went to the other room. Or they, uh, yeah. It was a Shabbos lamp. Then I assumed they, the whole home was the one. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Sure. Yeah, I thought of it like... They, didn't, uh, they must have there. had the... They probably had a little stoop. Right. Right. Tashma... Come and listen. Even though we said that it's this is a quote from a um, from a Mishnah. Even though uh, we it's a brisa. Even though uh, it, 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 the quote goes like this: that even though it's been said that a Mishnah Mishnah Tosler is Maguna, but nevertheless. Um, that nevertheless you can examine the cloth to the light of the candle. So the problem is, here you're saying it's clear that you can't just translate it as we're only examining the cloth, because you started off saying that although, you started off with never with an although or nevertheless, that means there's something wrong here. So, Ema Habaydik Mitasalar and means that he's examining, which is Hareza Maguna. Even to examine to the light of the candle is not good. It's not the Mashamish Mitasa is not good, it's the examining. Why? Because the candlelight is not strong enough. Yeah. You, yeah, need, you need the, you need the real daylight. The yeah, because the candle, you may not see what... Okay, Tashima. Come and listen. Mishal Beis Munbaz HaMelech HaYis and Gimel Devarim and Mastir Naisel Lishvach. Munbaz. Munbaz was a uh, uh, a king that I believe he converted. We have, he donated certain things to the temple. Him, maybe his mother, Hel- Helen, Helene, he- Helen, Helene, in the in the Gemara Sukkah, we have Helene Hamalka that Helene sat with her ch- yes. with her children. This is Helene Hamalka. This is, I think, it's her son or or uh, oh, yeah. or uh, wife or uh, husband. Mm-hmm. So from that household, and these are things that the sages praise them. They would have relations by day. They would. Examine, do examinations with parhava wool, which Rashi uses the word cotton. 
right? Certainly, it's happen. And v'nayu in a tumah v'tara b'shlagim, and they would consider snow as tumah or tar. They had they they kept the rules of tumah and tara with snow, and that's a big discussion about what's the status of snow. Is snow considered a liquid? I mentioned before, what's considered a food? Uh, let's say if you make a gafen, so then all of the drinks are covered. So if you have ice cream at the end, is that a drink? It's a dessert. It's a dessert. But the hagafen would cover a dessert wine. Would cover that as well if it's a drink. We don't say it's a drink. We say it's a, it's a food. So, but what is shellig? Shellig is considered a, a salad cone. or a liquid? A snow cone. That's a snow cone, that's yeah. That's a cherry snow cone. A snow cone. <laughs> 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 hmm. I asked my Rosh Hashiva, what's a bracha on an ice cream? You need a release. Oh, uh, that's a big question. That's good. So he said to me, if the ice cream is melted enough without you can't eat it with a fork, then it's a release. You need uh-huh. liquid. No, you can eat it with a fork. Very interesting. You hear that? You, have to, you, have, you need a revius or a kazayas for a bracha chreina. Yes, it depends if you can eat it with a fork. If you can eat it with a fork, then it would be a kazayas. Okay, so let's go through each one of these statements here. Rabbi Bober. Beautiful. Ketani Mia, it was taught, Masham Shemishet Mitisem Bayayim, have relations by day, that's a big problem. Eima Baitken Mitisem Bayayim, it means that they would examine the cloths by day. That's what they would do. It also makes sense to say that if we'd say that they would have relations, is that a praise? Where it says, No, in, 